Welcome to the White Knuckle Podcast with your hosts, Jason Science and Dr. Clint McCoy. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the White Knuckle Podcast, episode number 141. Um, we are back. Uh, we're back talking about the rut again this week, and uh, I guess the stage of the rut and where it's at. Um, Clint is in surgery this afternoon, so he's unable to be with us. But I was able to uh, lasso um, Jared Mills, um, who probably doesn't need a whole lot of introduction. Uh, Jared from uh, works with uh, uh, Midwest Whitetail, obviously, you probably know him from that, and uh, as, as well as Forty One North. Jared, how's it going? Good man, how are you doing? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Frustrated at times, you know. We we get so excited for the rut, um, mm-hmm. and the different stages of it, and then you just want to bang your head against the wall. Um, I've I've sworn yeah. myself off of looking at social media <laughs> while while it's the rut. It's even harder this year too, just with the the weather and everything. I mean, it feels more like mid November than it does uh, late October. What do you th- anyway. What do you think? What 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 kind of effect do you think that that has on the movement? I think it has a, a huge impact on the movement. I don't know that it affects the <clears throat> the rut per se. I think everything's still going to be really good in November and you know the usual time frames. But I think just deer been forced to be on their feet a lot more this this month these last few weeks. Mm-hmm. And it seems like every few days we're getting another cold front. I thought. I thought last October was really good. You know, just based on our team, we killed a lot of big deer last October, but you know, we've already surpassed it this year. And we just, it's just been crazy. Though the weather has been well below average pretty consistently in our area. Um, the quality hunting has been uh, a result of that. So it, it's been a pretty incredible October so far. What So what are you hearing from, it, like say in the last five days, what are you hearing from your, your folks that film for you? It seems like it's just about to bust loose. I mean, the deer movement, like I said, has been really good over the last few weeks in general. Um, but with regards to, you know, I'm, I'm starting to hear guys see their first real chases um, of, of some older deer, you know, three, four, five year old type deer starting to chase those. Even I'm seeing it just on the, just the evolution of, of the trail cam pictures I'm getting. You just start to see deer pushing pushing the envelope more and, and getting more daytime pictures. And I don't know that's necessarily that they're moving a lot more in the daylight now, but they are covering more area, which results in more daylight pictures. I'm, I'm getting, you know, six, seven-year-old bucks on scrapes at 9 a.m. Um, so I think we're right there, right on the cusp of it, uh, about to break loose in terms of rut activity. Um, and I think that come the, the time of the month, uh, in accordance with the weather we have, I think this next probably five, six, seven days uh, is going to be really, really good leading up to Halloween and the first couple of days of November. Yeah, it looks uh, the the long term weather forecast. Although it's going to warm up a little bit, uh, we're not going to have you know seventy degree temperatures, which we all know is isn't a whole lot of fun. We're going to have you know temperatures in the forties and in 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 the fifties, probably down where you're at. Yeah. Um, and it yeah. might touch sixty, but I don't think that really is going to slow anything down a whole lot. Um, yeah, I, I would agree with you. Um, a hundred percent. I'm starting to get a lot more nine, 10, 11, 12 o'clock new. I just sitting here getting ready to do this podcast. My, um, reveal app went off, um, the tactic cam, uh, camera that, uh, that we're, we've been using this year. And, and, uh, sure enough, there was a, um, just a two year old, um, hitting a scrape here right at noon. So they're, they're definitely on their feet. Last night I had a, um, a super close encounter prior to hitting the record button. You and I were talking about how work can interfere with, uh, (laughs) with hunting. And, um, I had to, I had to do about a two hour drive yesterday morning to list a farm. Um, so I got a hunt in, in the morning, um, got in the truck, screamed up there, got a signature, several signatures, got pictures, drone, all that stuff, flew back, was able to make it to the tree by four o'clock, was doing the interview. 
And uh, it was one of those deals where I was doing the interview and I kind of, my eyes glanced over and there he was standing. I would say he was probably in the <laughs> mid sixties to mid seventies. Um, this I was last night. This was last night in the snow, yeah. um, in the wind. And I don't know what, what boogered him up. He, he acted like he smelled me, but he ran up the ridge at me. Um, I watched him go under the fence um, I wish it wouldn't have been so brushy because it was what it would it'd be really cool video to see how a deer that big gets his entire rack under the fence, but he didn't have any problem right. doing it. But, uh, but yeah, that deer was out at four o'clock in the afternoon, but, um, I guess I'm curious to hear what your, uh, if you were going out tonight and maybe you are, what, what, what's going to be the deciding factor for you in terms of where you're going to sit? Well, I'm hoping to get out and uh, go back to what we talked about. It depends on much work I get done in the next hour or so. But um, and, and I guess first backing up, you you saw that deer early yesterday. For I saw uh, one of my target bucks at about 4:20 yesterday. He was the first deer we saw. He's coming out of his bed, um, and it's it's not what you typically see. We're not quite there yet. He. We saw him on and off for the rest of the night, but it was just real slow, calculated movements, kind of set, kind of checking little areas. It was not; it definitely wasn't cruising, you know, going, um, you know, like a buck on a mission. It was just very slow, kind of moseying around spot to spot. So it, it tells you we're not quite there yet, but we're right on the cusp. And it was, it was good to see him up and, and so early. Uh, but to answer your question. Uh, I'm still focusing a little bit on those areas where the does are spending a lot of time, um, feeding areas and transition areas. And I, this time of year, I really like setting up in callable areas. Uh, I think mature bucks especially are very prone to calling right now. I've, I've had a lot of good hunts personally. I've seen a lot of good hunts. This is next week, week and a half. Um, can be a great time to, to grunt a buck in or snort weed a buck in or even rattle a buck in. And for that reason, I like setting up in areas that allows me to do that, areas that I have good visibility and areas that I have uh, a good wind advantage where a mature buck's not going to easily be able to get downwind of me calling at it. So that's those are some of the biggest things I consider uh, for tree stand selection this time of year, uh, especially the calling part. Okay. So does a, does a callable, um, I guess you'd call it a, a callable spot. Would that be in the timber? Primarily uh, just, just be. because you're going to use that structure to keep them from. It get- can be, I don't necessarily love it in the timber right now. Cause there's, in our area anyway, there's still quite a bit of right. leaf cover on the trees. Yep. So your visibility isn't as far, um, I like being on the edge. Like last night, I was set up on the edge of a pond. I had the wind blowing back over the pond. Um, and, you know, if you had an area similar to that where it's a creek or a ditch or a river, you know, something that just doesn't make it easy for the deer to get downwind of you if you're calling. Um, that Those are the type of setups that I really like. And um, in the timber, eventually, I like. But right now, it's just you just can't see far enough in, in my area anyway. Mm-hmm. Okay. I I was just, I was absolutely curious. I, I guess when I thought about last night, um, the spot that I was in and and I decided to rattle, which I don't generally ever do. Um, Todd was just, he he hated rattling so much. So I hadn't done it in in the last few years. And and this year I, I've taken my horns along and, um, last night was the first night that I did it. And I did it only because I'm backed up to, or I'm relatively close to a, uh, a really steep drop off and on on the southeast side of me and on the northwest side of me and the winds out of the northwest um i've got about 60 yards to a cattle pasture so they're going to have a hard time yeah. getting downwind to me without getting shot um and it right. worked out i ended up rattling in a uh, probably a three-year-old eight pointer um which was cool but yeah, uh it's always cool to see bucks coming into the horn yeah yeah but uh, again um like you uh alluded to it's tough to tough to um tough to do it when you've got so much uh, foliage and and that's yeah. that's definitely a problem so so you're you're wanting to key in on food and a, a travel corridor basically is that is that what i'm hearing you say 
Yeah. Um, in our area, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of freshly picked ag fields. So, you know, corn and bean fields that are freshly picked. And that seems to be the, the preferred destination right now for a lot of the deer and those especially. But, um, a lot of properties that I have permission to hunt, those ag fields aren't on the property. They're usually on the neighbor. So a lot of times I'm assuming travel corridors are the routes that deer would take to get to their destination food source. And, um, sometimes I have little, you know, micro clover plots or brassica plots, something like that. Um, planted just as a, a transition food source that I'll be hunting. So that's, mm-hmm. it's just kind of spending time where the, where the does are congregating. They've been, they've been pretty consistent you know, over the last few weeks of where they're hanging out. And now the bucks are starting to frequent those areas to, to check on those does. Do you think that the deer, because of the, the cooler temps, say it's right now, it's 34 degrees out barometric pressure of 30.2 which is great um do you think that that's going to keep them off of green and on grain or do you think that it if they've been eating on alfalfa for the last few weeks that they'll continue to eat on alfalfa um i think it's a little bit dependent on what's in the area but i i don't think if they have some good food sources available i don't think they'll initially move off of them um let's see it was about a week ago, less than that, um, I took one of our guys, Grant, to my farm, and we killed a, a six and a half year old buck on uh, on green. I mean, he was just coming out. It was really, it was one of those really chilly days, and there was all kinds of deer hitting that. And again, they were hitting it because it was pretty close to bedding, and they eventually transitioned out of it. I'm assuming to head to the bigger ag fields, but. They uh they stayed in there and fed on the greens for long enough to to give us a shot. Okay, yeah, I mean I've got I've got an area with both. Um, I've got probably a, a eighteen acre um, alfalfa field with sixty acres of corn. Um, yeah. you know, close to it, and then I've got, I can I'm not a big fan of sitting on the edge of a of a um of a destination feed field, a big food field like that because. It's like, you know, right. trying to hit the lottery, uh, but I, I hit, yeah. and, I, and I haven't hit, hit that yet. So. Um, but, I mean, there is, is value in, in getting close to those areas, especially if you can see them and you feel like you're, I think if you're in an area where you know it's a travel corridor to that destination feed field, um, and if there is one out yeah. there, you can probably call to it. Um, is that what you see yourself yeah, doing I mean, most often? <clears throat> Yeah, and if you have that option, I just most of my employees don't have the option to sit on a big ag field. Like you said, it's they can be tough to bow hunt, but also going along with the callability, if you can set up in a spot where you know you're not going to be competing with a bunch of does coming out right on top of you, um, you could have a really good hunt with a decoy in that situation where you're just trying to call a buck up, you know, a couple hundred yards across an open field or something. That decoy would would basically make the difference of him coming right right into you or not mm-hmm. um the only situations i don't like using a decor is like i said an area where i know a lot of those are going to be coming out right on top of me those get nervous and, and kind of ruin it but if i can set up away from where most of the deer are coming out and call that buck to me having that visual up in that open field mm-hmm. uh, will make a big difference sure okay interesting um what what do you see most of your folks having success with is there a, a common tactic or theme that you see over and over again you mentioned that you guys have gotten um a lot of success here in in late october yeah um this time of year to me you know it's very weather dependent and we have that this year it seems like based on the forecast but it's I really like this week just because um, I think it's the best time to kill a local buck or a resident buck. You know, it's, they're they're still cored up in in the area that they've been the last few weeks. They're not traveling too much to to go try to find you know the last hot doe or anything. They're they're usually the bucks that are going to get the first hot doe in that in their core area. Um, so this is my favorite time to to catch a buck that's that's been in the area. So a deer that a guy's been getting pictures of for the last few weeks, 
I think this is the best time to, to catch him before things become random, for a lack of a better term, once November hits. You know, they could go anywhere based on <laughs> right. the hot dough. But then it's like right now. A dart. And, uh, yeah, exactly. But, but right now, while they're out checking these areas, looking for that first hot dough that's in their area, um, in my opinion, that's the best time to catch a, a, a resident buck. And that's why we see this next week leading up to Halloween. Uh, it's such a good week of the season. I had uh, someone email me today and ask me a question, and I'll see if you answered it or you would answer it the way that I did answer it. And that was um, – they were they were asking about um, whether or not to uh, depend on their trail camera um, for you know t- to take into account what the deer might do because it's the rut. So in other words, um, I guess to to maybe put it in into um, more I guess more specific terms, um, this person had a uh, a couple different deer using. The same trail an hour after dark, an hour before daylight, um, pretty consistently through the 22nd, 23rd, you know, just within days, um, not every day, but pretty consistently on and off for the last, you know, three, four weeks. And uh, mm-hmm. they asked if I felt like that deer would um, still be using that same travel corridor. And, and my answer was, I, I don't see why it wouldn't, um, unless something mm-hmm. has changed, you know, in that timber where they're betting like i you know like human intrusion or something like that um i wouldn't see mm-hmm. that it would uh it would change what what are your thoughts on that i, I would tend to agree I, I don't think we're quite at the time of year where their movements are going to change dramatically and they're going to start traveling further distances i mean i think there's going to be plenty of does coming into estrus uh fairly soon in that buck's core area he's not going to have to go real far to find it and uh and and we're not quite there yet anyway so he he should still be using that if he was using it you know a few days ago there's no reason uh, it wouldn't have changed and you know the thing about trail cameras i i love them as a tool and i know you guys do as well um but they don't get everything i mean most most guys aren't running a crazy number of cameras and to for a, a buck to adjust his trail or his pattern that night or on, on any given night by 50 yards and, and completely miss the camera is nothing um, and i think we we kind of rely on the cameras a little bit too much by thinking oh we didn't get pictures of him he must not have he must not have been there tonight right. he must not have been there this morning um when all reality he probably was he just didn't happen to walk in you know, those few feet in front of your camera, he's probably in the general area. So uh, I never get too nervous if a few days go by or a couple of days go by and I don't get pictures of him. I just usually assume that he's still there. And you know, getting back to the question, I, I don't see any reason why that particular buck would uh, would change based on what he was doing a few days ago. Okay. All right. Well, hey, thanks for taking the time. If you could, uh, if you could give us some bullet points for the week ahead what what uh what it would be that you'd be concentrating on other than work um <laughs> yeah exactly you can take some of the work on my hand so i can spend more time on the tree <laughs> right exactly no um uh, it's it's uh this it's, it's that time of year you just need to, to get out if you can um again this weather is phenomenal at least in our area it's phenomenal for this time of year you really can't draw it up any better so i expect uh there to be some really good hunting starting today really um conditions look great today starting today all the way through halloween um looks really good and, uh, I, th- I think everything's lining up so my only recommendation would be getting a tree if, if you have the option and you know concentrate on those areas you've been seeing a lot of does lately the bucks will be checking those out They're, they've already started to check them out but they're probably going to start checking them out a little more during daylight hours a little more frequently going to, to more places so um yeah i mean get that sure yes this is the time of year that you need to be doing it all right well there you have it uh, i'll uh, i'll take your advice <laughs> you just completely uh, changed my whole plan for the night <laughs> well, I need to let you get off the phone so you can get in the tree. Oh yeah, I've got a couple more things to do, and then I'm gonna make my way out there. So, well, um, good luck. Any final thoughts? 
That's it. I appreciate you having me. Yeah, no problem. Glad to, glad to do it, and uh, good luck the rest of the year. And, uh, again, thanks for taking the time. Have a good rest of your day. Thanks, Jason. You too. All right. Bye now.